for the longest time, I just had an Apple keyboard like this, and I was perfectly happy with it. But a few years into my career as a software developer, I started to develop really horrible pain in my wrist, in my hands, in my elbow, my forearms, basically my entire arm from my elbow down to my fingers. And it eventually got so bad that I could only work one or two hours before I was in so much pain that I had to stop. And I would be in pain from the moment that I started typing until basically the moment that I had to take a break. And that's the reason why I got the Moonlander was pretty much to alleviate the pain that I had from typing. But as you may have been able to guess from the thumbnail of this video, I've decided that it's time to say goodbye to this quite honestly a phenomenal keyboard. And I will just say from the get go that this is a phenomenal keyboard. But the sad reality is I still have issues from RSI or just repetitive strain injury. And so I just I need to try a different option. Switching to this keyboard it did help my wrist pain quite significantly, and now that I think about it, I don't really remember the last time that I felt any wrist pain, but unfortunately, I still have issues with my elbow and pain going down my forearms. It basically feels like both of my forearms are on fire after I've been typing for an entire day, and it used to just be my right arm, but lately it's been my left arm too. And I genuinely love programming. Like, I, I love my job. I literally cannot imagine myself doing anything else. So finding a different profession just is not an option for me. And that amount of desperation is what eventually led me to drop 500 freedom bucks on this keyboard that I have right here, the Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro. I've heard amazing things about this keyboard and that it basically cures cancer. So it kind of feels like a last ditch effort to try and get my pain management under control. And I'm working on a second video that focuses more on my initial impressions of the Advantage 360 Pro, which are honestly quite mixed. It was delivered last Friday and today is Monday, so I've had a few days to play around with it and I just finished my first full workday using it exclusively, even though I was sorely tempted to reach for my trusty Moonlander. I will say that this keyboard is hands down more comfortable than the Moonlander. There is absolutely no question about that. But after using the Moonlander for about a year now and switching to a different ecosystem, I am really gonna miss the Oryx keyboard configurator software. And I am admittedly biased toward the Moonlander right now, and things can change after a year from now if I'm still using the Advantage 360. But as of today, if I had to choose between the Moonlander and the Kinesis Advantage 360, and I wasn't dealing with the RSI issues that I am dealing with, I would not hesitate to pick the Moonlander. And what is the Moonlander? Well, obviously it's this thing right here but it's a split mechanical keyboard with an ortho linear layout. It's got this awesome little thumb cluster right here. It's fully programmable, and it also has this nifty little tenting feature. And having had some time to compare it against the Advantage 360 Pro, I just wanted to talk about some reasons why you might wanna get the Moonlander over another option like the Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro. And just as a disclaimer, I am not a keyboard guru by any means. The only keyboards that I've ever used are just your normal mass-produced keyboards with standard layouts, and then the Moonlander, and now the Advantage 360 Pro. So really, this is just my perspective after using this keyboard for over a year and switching to a different keyboard. So one of the first reasons is if you get a keyboard that's split like this, you're probably gonna make it your daily driver and it'll be the primary keyboard that you use. And because of that, you might wanna be able to carry it around with you. And this is especially true if you're a hybrid worker and you switch between a home office and an on-site office, then you will probably appreciate how portable this thing is, especially when compared to the Advantage 360 Pro. And I mean, I'm not just trying to crap on the Advantage 360 Pro, it's just the, the one that I have to compare with the, the Moonlander. But just for comparison, this is the Moonlander right next to the Advantage 360 Pro. And even though the Advantage 360 is a split keyboard, like it's, it's still pretty chunky. And another neat thing about the Moonlander is that it comes with a carrying case that you can just throw the keyboard inside. And this has worked pretty good for me. Like I have absolutely no issues with 
putting the different halves of the keyboard inside of this case and just tossing it in my backpack. I've never felt like my backpack is bulging or like overflowing with crap because I've had to shove a keyboard in there. It, it does fit inside the backpack pretty nicely. Another reason why you might want this keyboard is because it's a fully programmable mechanical keyboard that kind of gives you this out of the box experience, meaning you can kind of have one of these niche keyboards. Well, I mean, I guess like it is a niche keyboard, but you don't have to go out and build your own. And another reason to get this keyboard is because the Oryx keyboard configuration software is really top notch. One of the issues I'm having with the Kinesis 360 Pro is that I'm having to write code to program the keyboard the way that I want. And this is because the 360 Pro model specifically doesn't have the smart set programming key like other models do. So it's not possible to just swap keys on the fly. I think this is the biggest issue that I have with the Advantage 360 by far, which is the, the software. As far as the user experience goes with the software for this keyboard, they're basically is none, but I've been trying to stay open-minded and give it a chance, but so far it feels like a pretty major downgrade going from the Oryx configurator software to manually having to program my keyboard. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm working on another video where I go into more detail on why that is, but it's definitely been a sore point for me. But another reason to get the Moonlander is the hot swappable keys. So going back to the Advantage 360, I'm kind of frustrated that it's a mechanical keyboard, but I can't pull out the keys without desoldering the keyboard and voiding the warranty. On my Moonlander, I pulled out all the keys and lubed the key switches, and that made a huge difference. One of the first things that I noticed when I started typing on the Advantage 360 is that pinging sound that you get from the springs and the key switches. And as an OCD person, that's really gonna bug me because I remember lubing the keys on my Moonlander and that making a huge difference in how the keys felt and in how they sounded. And also, if you want to switch out the keys that you have, that's totally an option that you have. So this one, it just came with the Cherry MX Browns, which you can probably see in there. And if I turn it to the side, you can probably see that there are different keys on, on this side. There are different key switches than the ones that came with the keyboard. And it was really nice having that option to try out different key switches, even though eventually I, I did put in the Cherry MX Browns. I just ended up liking them more, but it's been kind of nice having these other key switches. Uh, these are Glorious Pandas, I believe. And they have a, a bit heavier of a, a key press, which I kind of like for like the, the arrow keys and for the, the number keys up here. And so, yeah, that's been nice being able to kind of mix and match different key switches. But with the Kinesis, while it's possible, it's not really a thing. And then, of course, another reason why you might get the Moonlander is if you have wrist pain. And I, of course, am not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination. But just from my own personal perspective, this keyboard really helped my wrist pain. And I think it helped with the pain going down my forearms and going through my elbow. But in the end, it kind of just felt like it stayed that off and eventually those issues caught back up with me. But in the end, this was definitely much better for my wrist than just a regular keyboard. And I guess time will tell if the Advantage 360 is any better. And then of course, I can't talk about the Moonlander without also talking about the RGB lighting, which is really good on this board. And usually that's thought of as just an aesthetic feature, but the RGB lighting can also serve as a functional purpose. For example, you can change the individual colors of special keys or change the background of different layers. I found this really helpful and it's a feature that I'm really gonna miss on the Advantage 360. So if you do decide that you wanna get one of these things, then, you know, I've really put this keyboard through its paces. So here are some tips that might be helpful to you if you are a first time user of the Moonlander. So first, expect that the first week is going to be really, really hard. I heard everyone else say the same thing that it's going to be really difficult, but I was like, I'll be fine. I'm a fast learner. But yeah, I was dead wrong. With this keyboard, you're retraining muscle memory that's been ingrained after years and sometimes decades of using a standard keyboard. I've talked about my elbow and wrist and forearm pain as being the main reason why I got this keyboard in the first place, but honestly, the first month or so, it actually made my symptoms way worse because I felt like I was constantly trying to like fight against my muscle memory 
And it was really just like very minute muscle movements, but just trying to go like from this to hit the escape key and then trying to tell myself my brain like, oh, no, you actually uh, you need to go this way. I was just constantly fighting with my brain, trying to tell my fingers to do something that they just didn't instinctually want to do. But once I did get used to the keyboard, my symptoms did get a lot better. Another thing is if you get this keyboard, expect that you're going to be tinkering and tweaking your layout constantly. I eventually did settle on my core layout. Like for instance, uh, right here, this is what I use for command. Uh, and then this was for my symbols layer. This was my movement layer. And this was my spacebar. And you know, I did establish what I would consider my core layout, but there were constantly little things that I was tweaking all over the place. And in the year that I had this thing, I'm pretty sure that there's not a single week that went by that I didn't make at least one change to it. But on average, I would say that I probably made changes to it on almost a daily basis. And even if you're not like me and you're not making changes to it all the time, do expect that you are probably going to be making changes to it pretty frequently. Another tip, and this one only applies if you have a 3D printer, but the tip is to try printing keycaps to kind of act like training wheels. So I've already shown this key right here. So I 3D printed this as my command key and I've just kept it on there because it just has a different feel, different texture to it than any of the other keys. And it just helps me to home in on that key. But especially at first on the other side, I really struggled with this key right here, which I use as my shift key. And with my pinky, it was just really hard for me to distinguish between the shift key and the arrow key right here, right below it. So something that I did was I printed this little guy right here and you can see that it has this little wing on it. And let me just put it on real quick. And that right there, this little wing gave my pinky a little extra something to grab onto. And that was really useful for helping to train my muscle memory to know exactly where the shift key was on my keyboard. And eventually I was able to take it off and put it on the regular keycap. And then I had that muscle memory there and I didn't need the this training wheel anymore. And there's a lot of designs out there for these keycaps on the internet. The website I used, I think, was called uh, Thingiverse. So I also had like this one for uh, one of the piano keys. And there's also this one, which was a little taller than the other keycaps that come with the keyboard. And being able to print these keycaps really helped me to get used to this keyboard quicker. This next tip is about not screwing up your initial layout. So personally, I found that it's actually pretty easy to incorporate new changes into my keyboard but that really only applies to when learning something new. But when trying to retrain muscle memory, that's an entirely different animal. So while new changes to my layout were easy, trying to retrain muscle memory was very, very difficult. And knowing this should influence your initial keyboard layout, especially around the thumb cluster. So when I first got the Moonlander, my right hand was primarily my problem hand, but when I made my initial layout, I put the space bar on the right thumb cluster. And that I think turned out to be a pretty big mistake because the space bar is by far the most pressed key. And I assigned it to a key that would be used by the hand, my problem hand that I had the most problems with. And I wish I would have realized this earlier and swapped the right and left thumb clusters because I think that would have saved me a lot of pain. But once I ingrained this into my muscle memory, like it was just, so hard to go back and I didn't want to go back through that painful transition again of trying to retrain my muscle memory. So when you go to create your first layout, be very mindful about where you assign keys, particularly around the thumb cluster. It's going to be hard at first no matter what, but once you train that muscle memory, you are not going to want to have to retrain it again. And another thing that I wish I would have done was instead of putting the space key on the very outside, of the thumb cluster, I wish I would have gone with the middle instead. And the reason why I ended up going with the outside key was because at first I had the space key right here on the inside, but I noticed when I was typing, particularly when I was typing really fast, like on monkey type, I would experience cramping in my, my thumb. And so I decided that that wasn't a good thing. And so I moved it on the outside and that felt a lot better. 
but really only for fast typing. But honestly, we don't do a whole lot of fast typing as software engineers, but having the spacebar on the outside was more comfortable as long as my keyboard was flat. However, one of the main features of this keyboard is the ability to tent it, and that allows you to take your hand and kind of go from this position to more like this position, which is supposed to be better for the wrists. But when you do that, it actually moves the thumb cluster further away from the rest of the keys. And so what is comfortable like this might not be quite as comfortable when you tent it and put it like that. And what might be uncomfortable while it's flat might become more comfortable after you tent it. So even though I wanted to take advantage of the tenting feature, I felt like I couldn't really do it because by doing so and putting the thumb cluster further away, even though it doesn't really seem like it's that far away, it really does make a big difference and it just became too uncomfortable to use it like that. So by having the space bar in the middle right here, it kind of gives you the best of both worlds and gives you a little more flexibility if you want to try it out with it being flat or tented. But ironically, in the end, I just decided to have it flat anyway, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But first, I just wanted to point out that the degree to which you tent the keyboard can have a pretty big influence on what your layout looks like. And to this, I actually want to point something out that is on the Getting Started Guide on ZSA's website. And it says right here, start flat. The Moonlander has an exciting tilting system. It's fun to use. And yet when you start using the board, our advice is to spend at least a month with the board completely flat. And using it like this reduces the initial learning curve, which is quite steep as it is. And I actually have to say that I disagree with this advice. Like it says, it's a steep learning curve and it's going to be steep whether you tent it or not. And the hardest part of the learning curve is not remembering what all the keys do or how to use layers, it's retraining muscle memory. And so in my opinion, you should start with a configuration that you want to use. And even after one year of owning this, I have found that tilting it or tenting it just a little bit requires just a small transition period to retrain my muscle memory to uh, account for just that very small adjustment. And this goes very nicely into my next tip, which is if you plan on going between two different locations a lot, I would just completely forget about the tenting feature altogether. For the longest time, whenever I moved between my home and work office, I would get out my Allen wrench and adjust the little pin things right there, whatever they're called. And I would do that every time because I felt like if I wasn't, then it was like I was losing value from the keyboard. But eventually I just got tired of it and then I just kept it flat all of the time. And if I had to start over, I'd probably do the same thing because that's just my personality and I'm just stubborn like that. But just know if you move between locations a lot, then eventually it's probably going to get old trying to adjust this all the time. I mean, who has the time to spend 60 seconds to set up their keyboard every time they pull it out? And then just as kind of a last tip, once you have your initial layout, like your first rough draft of what you think you're going to want to use, I would highly recommend going in and turning on the heat map for the keyboard in the Oryx configuration software and use that to help you locate areas of your keyboard that are not getting used a lot that are in prime spots like one of these keys on the thumb cluster or these keys around here that are really easy to access and pay attention to other keys that are hard to access that you're using a lot like keys on the outside here or maybe like around here that you have to reach with your pinky and then make adjustments accordingly. And of course, this is not a perfect keyboard. And so some reasons why you might not want to get this keyboard is well, because it is very different and it does have a very steep learning curve. The thumb cluster is hard. The ortho linear layout is just different. Layers are hard until they're not, but still you have to use layers in order to get around this keyboard having fewer keys than your normal keyboard. And even though I can switch between this keyboard and like regular keyboards pretty easily, at the same time, I feel kind of stunted on regular keyboards where before the thought just never crossed my mind. Just a keyboard was a keyboard, but now I've drunk the Kool-Aid and I can't go back and this is gonna be hard if I ever have to travel and I have to carry around this thing, or I guess now I'm gonna to have to carry around this chonker. 
but if I didn't bring it with me, I would almost feel like I was missing a piece of myself. Another thing is the options on this thing really are endless. And at first you're probably gonna feel pretty overwhelmed trying to decide like what keys to assign where and how do I get the most out of this keyboard. I really do not think that this keyboard is for the faint of heart. You have to get this keyboard because you want this keyboard. And another thing is this keyboard is kind of a bet and kind of an expensive bet. Unless they've changed it recently, ZSA does have a 30 day return policy, but you do have to pay the shipping to send it back to Taiwan, which I believe is $90. And to me, you might as well not even have a return policy. I understand why they do it, but still it sucks. And even though the build quality for this keyboard is really good, there are still some issues with it. For instance, these lander legs right here, they get stripped very easily. I remember hearing that from other reviews before I got this thing and being very conscious about being like, okay, don't tighten it down too much. But still the, the first time that I tighten it down, I stripped it just a little bit on the side. And now there's just this tiny little spot where the, the feet just don't want to stay. And it's like right in a spot that I want it to be. And so that's been kind of frustrating and it really did not take a lot to strip it. As far as other build quality stuff goes, the keyboard comes with this cable right here, which is this rubbery, it has this rubbery texture, the kind that Lint just really wants to stick to. And for the price that you pay for this keyboard, it really ought to come with a braided cable. Another problem that I've found with this keyboard is the rubber feet on the back here. You can kind of see that there's this like smeared stuff right here. And that's because when I would go to set the keyboard down, especially when I had it tented, it would put just enough pressure on this corner to make that rubber corner, that rubber foot slide as I had my hand just sitting on it. And just that pressure, and there wasn't a lot of pressure, but just the constant pressure of pushing it forward made the rubber feet slip off eventually. And it eventually became just a constant problem where I would be typing away and suddenly I noticed that my keyboard had a little bit of a rock to it and I would pick it up and look on the back and this rubber foot would be like halfway slid down the keyboard. And the same issue happened on this side as well. So these rubber feet really are not the best. And it's another reason why I just eventually let it lay flat was so that I didn't have to deal with that problem as much. Another thing is with these wings that I haven't had on this whole time, but I don't know if this will pick up on the camera, but right here, there's some paint that is slowly chipping off. And that's why I put these stickers on here, especially on this side, the paint right underneath this sticker started to come off just from my palm sitting on it. And that started to happen just after a couple months of me owning the keyboard. And even after putting the stickers on there, it's started to chip just like around the corner of the sticker. It's not a huge thing, but it's definitely something that could be improved. And another build quality thing is with the carrying case. So the very first time that I pulled this case out of the box, I grabbed this right here and opened it up. And this Velcro piece right here just ripped completely off. And now it has my uh, hand stitching on there that has held up better than the stitching that just came with the, the case when I pulled it out of the box. But moving on, some other issues that I've noticed with this keyboard are with the layer lights that, that are right here. So these things are pretty much useless. When the keyboard is sitting down, I really don't notice it, but I wish I could. And another frustrating thing, and now I'm just all negative, Nancy, I really do love this keyboard, but I'm just pointing out some things that I think could be improved. But anyways, all of these things right here, the things that you tighten down that I can't remember what they're called for the life of me, but they are all righty tighty lefty loosey, except for this one right here. And there is a really good reason for that, which is when you take the Allen wrench and you go to tighten it, you tighten it down and like kind of into the table where if it was the lefty loosey righty tighty situation, then when you would go to tighten it and turn it up, it would move it ever so slightly up through the tightening process and that would make the keyboard uh, kind of rock a little bit. So it's totally reasonable why they do it like that. So I guess it's just one of those things that I'm nitpicking at this point. There's also a weird issue with the backlighting when you pick a color with a key versus when you assign a color to a layer. 
And just to demonstrate this, I've turned the lights down so you can see the colors better on camera. But normally I just go with white for the background color of layer zero, but I can change that by hitting this key and then picking one of these colors right here. So if I pick W right here and let go of that color, then you can see that the background color for layer zero is this purple color. But normally I just have it as white and that's so that I can distinguish between other layers. For instance, I can hit this key to go to my Colmac layer, which I have as this purple color. And it's the same purple color that we were looking at right here. And if we look at my layout here in my web browser, then this key right here is Violent Violet. And if we look at Colmac, the layer color for Colmac is also Violent Violet. But looking back here at my keyboard, the background color for layer zero is Violent Violet. But if I change it to my Colmac layer, you can see that the brightness increased just a little bit. And if I switch between the two layers, you can see that there's a noticeable difference between the brightness of the layers, even though it's the exact same color. And it's not really noticeable when I have the lights turned down, but when I have the lights turned all the way up, I definitely notice the difference. And finally, I wanna talk about some things that are on my wish list for the Mark II. And I'm assuming that there will be a Mark II because this is the Mark I, so that kind of implies there's gonna be a Mark II. But obviously, higher quality materials, things like the braided cable, better paint that doesn't like chip off just from your palm sitting on it, these rubber feet could really be improved as well as better landing legs, but not just better landing legs, but it would be kind of nice to be able to adjust them without needing an Allen wrench. I don't know how you would do that, but that would be a really awesome feature. Another thing would be just having more keycap options that come with the keyboard, such as the macOS command symbol, the alt, delete, escape, tab, etc. Another thing that I would really like would be to have an option to have the low profile mechanical key switches. As much as I love this keyboard, I'm honestly not a huge fan of mechanical key switches just because there's so much travel with them. Just going back to the Apple keyboard, I genuinely really like this keyboard just because I really like how the keys felt. There's just so little travel on them and I honestly think that this keyboard feels really good, the, the keys anyway. And the number one thing that I would like in a Mark II version of this keyboard would be Bluetooth. And of course with Bluetooth, there's a trade-off of stability there, but I really prefer the convenience of Bluetooth and not being tethered with a cord to my computer and also not having to carry around a cord with me all the time. There has been at least one time where I've packed everything up, gone into the office, gone through traffic, set up my stuff and realize that I forgot a cable. So yeah, a Bluetooth option would be really awesome in a keyboard like this. And I guess one last little thing would be the ability to switch between different profiles. So I kept trying to learn Colmac on this keyboard, but the main thing that kept holding me back, just besides the point that is really difficult, was that I kept wanting to switch between Colmac and QWERTY just so that I could jump back to the safety of QWERTY when I really needed to. But even though I could put Colmac on its own layer, when I was on that layer, I couldn't use my other layers like my symbols layer to do programming stuff. So that just made it so I couldn't really use Colmac unless I made it my primary layer. And then that would just really screw up with my productivity when trying to do like work stuff with my job. And so yeah, being able to switch between two different profiles where I could have one profile that is QWERTY and another profile that is Colmac would be really awesome. But with all of that said and all of that complaining, this keyboard is totally worth it. I'm really sad that I still have issues with RSI. And even though the Kinesis seems like it's going to be a pretty good keyboard, I'm really sad to be moving on from this keyboard. It really truly has been a phenomenal keyboard. And if you're in the market for getting something like this, I highly recommend this keyboard. But for now, I'm gonna be giving this guy right here a run for its money, and we'll see how it goes over the next couple of months. And if you want to see a video where I talk about my first impressions with the Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro, I will put it right here somewhere. I don't know, I'll put it somewhere on there though. And until then, I'll see you later.